You know, sometimes you have a problem, you want to fix it, but the way you can try and fix it only makes things worse. That was unfortunately the case at Clapham Junction Station just outside of London, England. In 1988, British Rail decided that its 40-year-old signal system needed to be replaced with a new one. So, signal maintainers, as well as electricians, went to work replacing the older signals with new ones. However, when it came to the Clapham Junction signal, it was clearly not wired correctly. This would cause it to display false information and cause, do I say it, confusion and delay. Never thought I'd say that. On December 12, 1988, the 718 train from Basingstoke to London Waterloo Station, which was a crowded train made up of three four-car British Rail Class 432, or 4VP EMUs, was approaching Clapham Junction when the driver noticed that the signal ahead of him was red when it should have been yellow. Amazingly, he had to stop his train and report the problem to the signal box by telephone. However, he got the reply saying that there was nothing wrong with the signal. Obviously, that was complete bogus. And what he didn't know was that the 630 from Bournemouth was getting rubbish signals too. It was made up of four British Rail Class 432 4 REP cars and two 4TC multiple units. He rounded a blind curve and slammed into the stopped Basingstoke train. The wreckage tumbled all across the side of the tracks. A third train, which was running light with no passengers and made up of two four-car four VEP cars, was passing on the adjacent line when it tripped over the wreckage as it was coming into the station. If that wasn't enough, a fourth train was coming too. Thankfully, it was only coasting with no traction current, so the engineer was able to see the trains and stop just in time before he could hit the wreckage. After the roar of the crash subsided, the driver of the Basingstoke train, who was still standing by the telephone, noticed his train was pushed forward several feet by the collision. He immediately picked up the receiver and spoke to the signalman, this time informing him of the horrible collision that had just occurred and asking him to immediately call emergency services. The signalman immediately switched all signals he could to danger and signaled to the adjacent signal boxes he had on the obstruction on the line. However, he had no control over the automatic signals and was not able to stop the fourth train, which was luckily able to stop. He then called the Clapham Junction Station Master and asked him to call the emergency services, and soon, within minutes, the rescuers were on the way. The accident had tripped the high voltage feed to the traction current, so the operator in the nearby Rains Park Electrical Control Room suspected that there must have been a derailment, so he reconfigured the supply so that the nearby Wimbledon trains could run fine. The wreckage, however, looked like something out of the Blitz bombings during World War II. Here's a cafe car, or what's left of it, with the roof caved in as, another as the other train car plowed right through. This one was thrown right to the side of the tracks. The students and teachers from the adjacent N. Manuel School who were the, fir and were the first on scene to the disaster. When rescuers arrived, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Three trains crashed right into one another with badly injured people in the middle of it and chaos. It was a mess. The rescue, however, was hampered because the railway was in a cutting with metal fences at the top and a wall at the bottom of a wooden slope. The last casualty was taken to hospital at 1304 and the last body was removed at 1545. A total of 35 people lost their lives, 69 were seriously injured, and another 415 only sustained minor injuries. 
an initial investigation revealed that the wiring on the signal was clearly messed up. This would mean that the signal would not show a danger aspect when the track circuit immediately in front of the signal was occupied. A 1978 British Rail Southern Region report had concluded that due to the age of the equipment, the resignaling needed to be done by 1986. However, approval was given in 1984 after a report of three wrong side signal failures. The resignaling project had been planned out, assuming more people were available and employees felt that the program was inflexible and under pressure to get the work done. Installing and testing was carried out on the weekend during voluntary overtime. The technician had been working a 7 day week for the previous 13 weeks. Now, the rewiring had been done a few weeks previously, but the fault had only developed the previous day when equipment had been moved and the loose and uninstalled wire created a false feed to a relay. The signaling technician in question did not cut back, insulated, or even tied back the loose wires, and his work was not supervised nor expected upon by an independent person, as was required by British Rail. In particular, a wire count that would have identified the false wire had not been removed and was not carried out. There was also inadequate training, assessment, supervision, and even testing with a lack of understanding the risk of signal failures, which were not monitored effectively. After the accident, testing was mandated on British Rail signaling work, and the hours of employees involved in the safety critical work was very limited. British Rail, however, was fined £250,000 for the breach of the Health and Safety Work Act. To Americans like me, that's 333,025 US dollars. Ouch. After the Basingstoke train stopped at the next signal after the faulty one, in accordance with the rule book, it was suggested that this may not be the best way of handling faulty signals. If the Basingstoke train carried on to the signal following the next, the crash probably wouldn't have happened, because the Bournemouth train would have stopped at the signal where the crash occurred. As of 1999, the rulebook has not been changed. Unfortunately, even 29 years after this crash, some people say that the lessons of Clapham Junction may have been forgotten. In December 29, 2016, a pair of redundant points at Cardiff Central have been left into an unsafe condition, undetectable by the signaling system. Thankfully, the driver noticed this and prevented a serious accident from occurring. Excessive work hours, the cancellation of route proving trains, and a lack of detailing planning were cited as contributory factors of the incident. Which begs the question, will a wreck like the Clapham Junction collision ever happen again? I sure hope not. <laughs>